from Fort Myers, Florida. Hard and late, 2157 Davis Court. Do you still reside in Fort Myers? Yes, sir. Now, uh, somebody watching this that might not be familiar with Fort Myers, uh, is Miami the closest major city to Fort Myers? Um, Miami two hours away, Orlando three hours away. So yeah, Miami the closest major city to Fort Myers. Okay. Now just curious, um, as far as uh, music is concerned, safe to say Miami is a a capital for music? I mean, you got New York City, you got LA, you got Atlanta. Miami, would it be safe to say, is a capital for music? Maybe even in Florida. Miami, all right. I won't mean, say no capital, but Miami, all right. Or not a capital, maybe a better phrase would be a hub, a major hub for music. Yeah, there's a lot more opportunity down in Miami than Fort Myers, so yeah. Just curious, why not move to Miami uh, for music purposes? I move out of, I, I already moved to Atlanta, up out of Florida, period, because the law is so fucked up down there, so hmm. I'd rather come to Georgia. Has there been a thought to move to Atlanta? Yeah, I thought about it. I'm still thinking about it. But haven't done it yet? Nah. Just a thought. You haven't taken it serious? Nah, I ain't. I took it serious, but just, I mean, I'm in a position where right now I can't move. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and why is that? Just curious. Uh, I'm on probation. I got a little, I'm still fighting a little charge. Well, I'm on probation for a little misdemeanor weed charge. I really violated probation, so once I get that out of the way, then... I see. Yeah. Got you. And when you say violated, it was a technicality? Yeah, or? it was a technical violation. I okay. pissed dirty. Got you. Yeah. Now, uh, you are in Fort Myers. Uh, what was that like for you growing up in Fort Myers? Can you paint that picture for us? Well, I grew up, I grew up with a lot of kids in the house. It was a lot of us. So it was like, it was hard. It was hard for like our parents. Like, like we, we all stayed with our grandma, so grandma couldn't watch all us at one time. So we always did what the fuck we want. Where was mom? Where was dad? Mom was working, dad in prison. How long was dad in prison for? Uh, throughout my life, my dad did about 13 years in prison. Uh, is he home now? Yeah, he's home now. Uh, during that 13 years, did you keep in good communication with him, in contact with I him? Wrote, I, wrote, I wrote him letters from time to time. We tried to stay in contact with him. I went to visit him a few times. How old were you when he got taken? The first time he got taken, I, was, I believe I was three. I don't remember that, but he told me that I was three. And then he left when I was five, and he came back when I was 10. And then he left when I was like 11, he came back. I was locked up in the uh, juvenile program. He had to come visit me. Mm. When he got out, I was, I was incarcerated. So it wasn't 13 straight years, it was three different bids. Yeah, it was like three, four different bids. I see. Yeah. Now, what was that like when he had to come visit you? It was like, shit, I was, it was different. Cause I, was used to, I, used to, I was used to my daddy being like, you know how a dad is supposed to be always on your ass about mm -hmm. when you're doing wrong. But when he came to see me, we were kicking it though, like on some homeboy type shit. So that, that was different to me. I see. Yeah. Now, when your father was in prison, obviously, uh, and locked up, uh, obviously, uh, He's not with the family, so to speak. While he was locked up, would there be times where you had visitation, like physical visitations? Talking about with my, with my own father? Yeah, would you ever physically see him in person? Yeah, 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 I wouldn't have seen him when, 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 when you were in state prison. You can have a contact visitation, all that. You know what I'm saying? We ate together, we chilled. Hmm. Yeah. All his bids were state prison bids? He did. He, he, his first bid was in federal prison. I wanted to see him in the federal prison, too. The food was better in the visitation area, I know that. Then the rest of the bill was in the state. And what was he getting locked up for, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I know he went to Fed. I, I believe he went to Fed with some dope charges. And then he violated his federal probation. I forgot. He violated federal probation, so he had to go finish that time and do, and do, he, he violated with a new charge, so he had to go do that time too. 
I see. When he did come back home from his prison bids, uh, was he still, uh, what, did he like live with you guys or? Uh, well, I, I got, I, I said I got two mamas cause like his wife, she like, she raised me as, as well as my mama raised me too. Okay. So it was like I had, I was always back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I see, I got you. Yeah. Okay, and when you, you did mention grandma, was this grandma on father's side or mother's side? On stepmama's side and, and uh, father's side. Okay, I yeah. see. Now, when you were in juvenile, what were you in juvenile for at that time? I went to the program for like, for like multiple charges. Like, they all, they all mounted up to be misdemeanors though. It was like attempted burglary, it was a burglary charge. They couldn't convict me of it, so I got attempted burglary, and they dropped it to trespassing. Care could see a weapon, but I was just always getting doing a lot of shit, but I couldn't, they never like, you know, all my points just added up. They sent me to the program. When your father seen you locked up, uh, was he surprised? He wasn't really surprised. Was, was he su disappointed? Nah, was he wasn't disappointed because he already knew once he got locked up, the route a nigga was gonna take. What I know, what I'm saying the shit I watched him do, he knew I was gonna take that route. So he he kind of like put the blame on himself, so he couldn't be mad. He felt like he couldn't be mad at nobody but himself. But at the end of the day, I'm my own man. I know right from wrong. I choose to do what I want to do. Now I've done interviews with people where they may have a a family member that does some street activity, and when you they see somebody do time and that sort of thing, they don't want to take that route. Yeah, you got it. But I was raised I was raised in the streets and that's all I ever wanted. I, I just wanted I just wanted to be in the streets when I ain't know what was really out in the streets. And when I found out what was out in the streets, I really I tried to back out but it was too late. And the nigga just had to keep going full throttle. Too late? Yeah, it was too late. Mm. Like I was in the streets. Now, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but uh, you did say you grew, grew up pretty hard. You also said you grew up with a lot of people. Are we talking uh, siblings? Nah, cousins. Oh, I had three brothers, two brothers. I had two brothers, one, one, one of them passed away. And like, it was like a lot of cousins, brother, homeboys, but all that stuck together like family. Mm. All us was like family, all, you know what I'm saying? All that stayed on the same roof. How many people are we talking under one roof at one time? Man, I had a, a lot of grandkids. I, about, at least about, man, about 20 of us, man. We had, it was a big family, big family. 20 under one roof? Yeah, well, yeah, we were kids, a lot of kids. And we're not talking a mansion here? Nah, nah, we right in the, nah, in no mansion. Uh, what were what yeah, was, in a little hut now, nah, but it ain't no mansion. What what were sleeping arrangements like back then? Twenty people under one roof. See, it'd be about five or six of us in, in one bed, on a twin bed, just pile up. See, get in where you fit in. You got bitches on the floor, bitches in the living room on the couch. You gotta get in where you fit in. What about when it came to like using the shower, taking a bath? See, it went, it went back, back then we were small, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes we bathe together. Uh, it's, it's a line. Mm. Yeah. Not fun. It was fun. I miss it, to be honest. You miss that? Yeah, I miss that. Why? That's I don't, this is how I grew up, my little childhood. I miss my childhood. I wish I could go back to them days. Just some good old days right there. Shit really? ain't the same no more. What, what was one of your best moments, even in that environment for you back then? Best moments? Yeah. I can't, I can't remember my best moments. Uh, mm -hmm. Just curious. You said you liked it. You enjoyed it. I loved it. Too. Everything was like it's just the atmosphere. Even though at the moment we like, like damn, it ain't no AC. We in this bitch sweating. It's rats in here. But at, we gonna make the best out of it. You feel mm -hmm. me? We gonna make the best out of it. Time ain't the same no more. Now uh, let's say somebody's watching this, and uh, maybe they have to live with a lot of people under one roof in a tight amount of space. Any advice there? I mean, circumstances could be different for everybody, but any advice? See, it'll get great a little. It'll get great a little. Now, you also you, you did mention it was hard. Uh, growing up in that environment that you painted, actually, before I even ask you this question, you did mention your brother passed away. 
How did he pass? My brother was killed. My brother was killed when I um when I got out of my program 20, 2013, April 20th, it was 420, my brother got killed. Him and my little cousin got killed on my front on my front porch. I was sitting in the house. I heard the shots. I came outside, it was too late. Gun violence. Yeah. Uh they were targeted, it was a mistake, mistaken identity. No, nah, it wasn't no mistake. They really came for me. The niggas who killed them, they came for me. But like I was like in the house type shit, so it was like whoever out the door finna get it. And you know what I'm saying? My brother them, them they, they weren't in the streets. They really weren't in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Them boys like, one of my little cousin, he played football. My other brother, he rapped it, but he wasn't in the streets. He rapped though, but he wasn't in the streets. How did you react to that? Uh, Shit, I had to stay sane for my pet, for my family. My parents and shit, they were crying. I had to stay, I had to stay sane, stay strong for them. But you know, I ended up a year after that. I ended up getting booked for a murder. Was there a level of um, guilt associated with that? Like talking about, uh, did I feel guilty about my brother them dying? Yes. I feel guilty about them dying every day. Every day I feel like, damn, you know what I'm saying? They could have been in the house with me. Or I said, if I never took the route I took, they'll be still they'll be still breathing. Or when when the shoes on the other feet, if I were dead all that right then and there, they'll still be here too. How do you cope with something like that? Shit, I, I can't smoke. I've been smoking lately, but I just get drunk and just be, just be vibing and just let, you know what I'm saying, try to drink that shit away, try to swallow my pain. Sometimes it works, sometimes I cry, but I keep my head up. Self-medication. Yeah. Uh, have you ever sought therapy or counseling for this stuff? Nah, hell nah. I'm, I'm, I'm stronger than that. At the end of the day, it will go it, like it will goes on in the streets though. You know what I'm saying? You live by that shit. You do dirt, dirt gonna come back around. You know what I'm saying? You gotta take that shit how it come. The same way you get that shit, you gotta take that shit. When, when that shit come back around, you gotta receive it the same way. Now, that time was a while ago. That wasn't something that was recent. But uh, hindsight, 2020. Do you feel like you need it? Do you feel like you need counseling? Do you feel like you need therapy for that type of death and, and those motions that you went through? Nah, like I said, I'm strong. I'm strong enough to, it, it happened every day. Can't be a weak mom, my brother. Turn, on it, turn over in his grave, see him being that weak like that. Mm. That event that happened, is that something that you've spoken about in your music? Yeah, I speak about it all the time. Have you made a song about them? Yeah. You have. What was that song called? It's called Reality Check. And um, was it emotional creating that song? It really. I wrote it. It was really the fastest song I ever wrote. Cause I like. I it was like it wasn't nothing I had to think about or nothing. Even though a lot of my music, you know what I'm saying, I ain't got to think about it. It's just like a lot of shit. I just write like about my life story. But that was the fastest song I ever wrote. I just. Everything that happened, I just put it, put it on the paper and made it rhyme. How long after the event happened did you write that song? Like, how much time elapsed before you actually created it? It was a year later. I, I got, I was, I was sitting in county on the murder charge. It was a year, it was a year later when I wrote that song. You wrote it while you were locked up. Yeah. And then you recorded it when you got out. Yeah. Um. How does one know the right time? to create a song like that? It'll come to you like, it'll come to you, it's like it's all depending on how you, how you, how I can speak for myself. Like, however I'm feeling, if I'm in the mood, I'm like, man, I, I might be thinking deep about some shit. I just want to turn the beat on and write. You know what I'm saying? It's just how you feel, it's just how you have whatever type of mood you in. Some, you know what I'm saying? Some people try to run away from that pain, but some people can, can let that pain go through music, you know what I'm saying? Is it ever too early or too late to make a song after nah. the death of somebody? 
Hell nah, cause you, you know what I'm saying, you might make it too late. Be like, oh, he should have been doing woo woo, but at the same time, nobody don't know what you were going through. You might try to keep that out your head and don't want to think about that situation. For you, was that the right time to make a song like that? Yeah. Thinking back, hindsight 2020? I thought about it every day. Every, I was thinking about it today. Every day I wake up, I think about it. I see him every day. How did other family remember? How did other family members react to that song after you you were finished with it? They they felt that shit, but my stepmama can't listen to it. She can't listen to it. She cried when she listened to it, so she she, she don't listen to it. Did you make a music video for that song as well, or no? Nah. Uh, one of the family members that got killed uh, also did music himself. Yeah, my brother, my brother rap. Did you ever make music with them? Yeah, we got a lot of songs. So is there still some unreleased music between you guys? Yeah. Have you put any of it out since his death, or are you holding on to it? No, I ain't putting none. Me personally, I ain't putting none of it out. But some of it have been leaked out through other people. By accident? I Without your say, permission? Yeah. Uh, did that upset you when that happened? or No, nah, I don't trip on it, because I really ain't got the files and all saying I don't really got... I don't got them tracks, so when I hear them myself, I'll be like, damn, where they found this at? Uh, did that event change the direction of your music at all? It made me go harder. When my brother was alive, I ain't, it made me go harder. What would he think of where you're at in your music career now? He'll be smiling, but he'll tell me I can do better and go farther. I know he's smiling right now, but he like, bro, you can go better. You can go harder. Was that the toughest death you've experienced so far? Yeah. yeah that's crazy. Once again, you've had a, uh, a hard life growing up. That was rough. We just talked about the death of uh, two of your family members. Was that your roughest moment for you growing up, or was there a rougher moment than that? No, it wasn't nothing rougher than that. It wasn't nothing rougher than that. I had a lot of rough shit. I don't know. First, my auntie died. My auntie died in the drive-by shooting. That was a year before that, or two years before that. And then my, one of my best friends, he died when I was in the program. Then I came home and, like, my brother and my cousin died right on my front porch. So shit was shit been crazy. Uh, your aunt that passed away in the drive-by, was that just an, an innocent victim? Somebody yeah, she, caught was in, a, she was an innocent bystander. Caught in the crossfire? Yeah. That's tough. Yeah, she passed. Uh, you also did mention earlier that uh, you were arrested for a murder. Yeah, that was the year after my brother passed. You were able to beat that charge? Yeah, I got acquitted. I want to try, I got to quit it. It was crazy though, it was like, I don't know, shit, God is good, shit. It was like three, four bitches on the stand, like pouring me out, oh, it was him. He did this and did that, but you know, I still came from under that shit. And you were able to beat it? Yeah, I got to quit it, all charges. One murder, four attempted. Now, um, with this, hard uh, description you painted. On the opposite end of the spectrum, what was the most positive moment for you? Was it uh, being acquitted in that trial for you? Was it something else? Being, a, talking about what's the most positive moment? Yeah, you know, if- In my life? Yeah, it, growing up, the so second like- second time winning trial, that was the most exciting moment in my life. The second time. You went to trial two times. Yeah, that's, that's, more, that's the most exciting day of my life. And what was the charge in that incident? I had a, a, I was face, I was fighting racketeering, two counts of racketeering. It's one count of racketeering, and the other one racketeering conspiracy. Uh, was it the same attorney you used for both? No, I had, I had um, on a racketeering, I had, I had co-defendants. So one of my co-defendants had got, got the lawyer that I had on my murder case. So it'd have been a conflict of interest if both of us get the same lawyer. I see. So I had to get a different lawyer. Both beast mode though. Both beast mode attorney. Uh, care to share their names or no? Yeah, Robert Harris and Joe Villacavio.
Bro, I had Robert Harris on my murder charge. He a, he a beast. And I had Jovia Carvey on my racketeer charge. He a beast, too. Both of them saved your life? Both of them saved my life, yeah. What were you facing if you would have lost trial the first time? What were you facing if you would have lost trial the second time? The first time, I, I scored all the way out to uh, life plus 135 years, some Florida shit. They, they gonna hide you under the jailhouse. The second time I was facing life, they could have gave me 20 years up to life. Anything between that. And how old were you at the time of each trial? I just, okay, this, this 2018, I just wanna try this shit in August. So I was, tw I was 23 when I won a trial. My birthday was uh, August 16th. So I had my first birthday party on the streets. And the first time I was 19, I won a trial when I was 20, I got out to 21. So you're 2 and 0 at this point. Yeah, that one mama said, <laughs> I almost said 2 and 0. I hope you never have to face trial again. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, now, growing up, going to school, what type of kid were you in class? I want to say I was a, uh, I ain't going to lie. I felt like I didn't get a lot of attention at home. So in school, I was like, I was a kind, I was like, I like to reach out to try to get the, the teacher attention. I was, I was bad as fuck. I just do shit, do dumb shit. I was bad as fuck. I didn't make it through school. I wasn't good at school. And I couldn't do the work. So when I can't do the work, it was like, it's, I'd be scared to ask for help. So I just misbehave and like give me an excuse why I don't, well, don't got to do the work. Hindsight 2020, I mean, you're older now. Do you, do you regret that? Do you wish you would have? I regret it. I do regret it. Took a different approach to it back then? Yeah, but yeah, I regret it. But at the same time, I ain't going to say I regret it. Because I was like, I would talk, don't regret. If I'm going, if I'm going to regret it, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's the type of my friend I got now. So at the end of the day, shit, fuck it. When you were misbehaving, uh, did it lead to in-school suspensions? Did it lead to expulsion? Did it get yeah, that bad? Yeah, I end up, um, I end up, I went to, uh, I was at Dunbar Middle School. That's a, a public school. I ended up getting sent to a turner school called LC. And I just used to come there and go as I please. Whenever I get ready to jump the back gate, leave school. Then they put an anchor on the Toma Lead. And they sent me to um first my mom put me in the Christian school and said that was gonna work. They ain't work though. They got a call said it was a robber at school on the school camp, something like that. I was in that sleep. I don't know what the fuck happened, but they they said I did it. So I got a spell from there. So I ended up getting put in public school. That ain't work out. They ended up kicking me out of public school. I just really went and did good till I got off the anchor monitor. Once I got out the income monetize, I just dropped out and stopped going. What grade was this? Ninth grade. Very beginning of high school. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know how a 10th grade class look. Did you ever get a GED in? Nah, I, I don't know, man. I don't think I, I don't know. I tried. I can't, I tried, shit. When I went to the program, I tried like 20 times. I can't even, I don't Illiterate. Tried 20 times? Or you exaggerating? No, nah, no, nah, I'm exaggerating, okay. but I tried, though. <laughs> I tried, though. Now, um, okay, I want to switch gears here. I want to do... Um, I want to do this. I want to ask you... Um, I want to ask you this. Well, before I go on to a new topic, when it comes to street activity and, uh, and that path there, uh, there was something you said in the interview where you said something to the point of, uh, you know, when you wanted to get out of it, it was too late. I think that's what you said, something along those lines. Yeah, it was too late. Um, and, and when you started, how old do you think you were when you took that path, that route? What, like when I jumped, like when I, when I jumped, like jumped in the streets for yes. a throttle? Yes, yes. How old do you think or what grade do you think you were in? 
I was I was young, I always wanted to be in the streets, and I was like, I always had one foot in the streets, not even realizing it, that I was in the streets. I was in the streets. I was in the streets when they didn't even realize I was in the streets, because I didn't know what the fuck was going on in the streets, but I was out there. So that was a, I was a baby. I was a baby, like, where I'm from, like, I was a baby. Where I'm from, I ain't number 24 years old, but you got some niggas that look at me like I'm an I'm a OG, and I ain't number 24 years old, because I've been out there so long, and I done did a lot, and I done saw a lot, and I've been through a lot of shit that a lot of OGs can't say they've been through or already been through that shit, and they ain't number 24. I done did a lot of shit a lot of OGs can't say they can't say they did that, you know what I'm saying? I was out there for a long time, I don't even remember. I, like I said, my daddy went to prison when I was 10. When he got out, when he got out, I was in the ground. I was 18 in the ground. He, he went to prison, like, about 11, 12 years old, I was thugging. I got my first pistol, like, 11, 12 years old, I was thugging then. Very young. Mm-hmm. Did your parents at all try to persuade you to do a different thing? Yeah, yeah, my mom be trying to beat my ass. <laughs> my mom would catch me out, my mom would beat my ass. I used to run from it, though. Like, on, on Sunday nights, I know it's school tomorrow, she'll come looking for me. I, I see a car running high. Now, um, while you were in the streets, uh, you were in school at one point. I was in school, yeah. You were in the streets, obviously, so that one foot in, one foot out. Uh, in no, that I had two foot scene. Okay, you had two feet. Two I feet was in. in school, but I wasn't in school. I was going to school to sell weed and shit and take shit that I don't got from the other kids. I see. Uh, let's say there's a kid watching this, and maybe they can relate to your story. Maybe they're, maybe some of the aspects of, of what you've said already they're doing right now, or maybe they're thinking about doing. Now, uh, circumstances could be different for everybody. But do you have any general advice to a kid watching this that's, um, that's about to do maybe what you've described or is currently doing it already? I'm going to tell them that shit, that I, I, ain't, I ain't amount to shit. If I did this right shit don't work, I ain't got nothing but the streets. And it ain't nothing in the streets but the, the jailhouse and the prison yard and the graveyard so you can pick one. It ain't nothing out there for you. It wasn't nothing, nothing, nothing out there for me, but I didn't have a nigga to tell me that, that it wasn't nothing out there for me. So I, 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 I niggas influenced me to get out there, and I got out there. But it ain't nothing in them streets for me or you. Stay out of them. You did mention music. We've talked about music during this interview. What age did music start for you? I've been doing, I've been rapping, I've been rapping since I was a little boy, like, we used to do, we you know when they had a little uh, tape recorder, you don't got no beat, you just press record on the boom box, that be recorded, and you rap, press pause, since then, so I, I was a little boy, I was like, that was before my dad went back to prison, so I had to be 9 to 10. When you were in school, did you do any music classes? Did you do... Band, chorus, and elementary, they make you go to music class, but I ain't pay attention to that type of shit. Mm. While you were also in school, I know you misbehaved and got into some mischief there, uh, even street activity in school. Uh, but uh, did you ever freestyle back then? Were you into like battling other classmates? Were you that type of kid or no? Nah. But Ever. I used to always sit in class and when I can't want to work, be too hard, I can't do my work. I scribble down some rhymes. Ever do talent shows by any chance? Nah. Never did that either. Uh, ever get into sports? Yeah, I played football. I wish I would have kept playing football. I love the football. How, uh, how long did you do it for? Did you, was it like middle school football? Was it high school football? Part one. Pop Warner. Yeah, I played Pop Warner. I ain't, I ain't never played high school. What position were you when you were playing Pop Warner? I played running back. Were you any good? Yeah, I was. I was great. I was great. People saying you were straight, or your, yourself People saying, saying you were straight? People saying I was great, and no, I was straight. Shit, I scored touchdown. I'm straight in it. Why did it stop? The screens. Then like, 
I always wanted to play part one, and my mama ain't never signed me up. She said I was too bad in school, my grades weren't right, but I couldn't get right in school. But when I played football, I, not, not, and I can't say that. The year my uncle uh, signed me up for football, I had good grades because I wanted, I wanted to play every Saturday, so I had to make sure my grades was good. But once the season was over, I was over. <laughs> After you dropped out of uh, high school, was music taken seriously at that point? Or did some time elapse before music became serious for you? I was doing, I was doing music, I was making music videos. We, we made CNN when I was in middle school. We did a video, the late boys did a video. Y'all can look it up on YouTube. Okay. We had a, uh, it was a bunch of guns in the video. So they say it was guns. That was when I was in middle school. We went CNN and all that crazy shit. They had to hold the news out there in my neighborhood. All type of crazy shit. So you weren't on CNN for a good music video. You were for a bad one. They make it bad, but really we were just like we were just trying to like my brother was rap. My brother ain't never get out. Of, my my brother never was in the streets. We were just really trying to. We seen other people like we watch we watch we watch other music videos. Niggas getting money. So we feel like this is our way from around this shit. We love this shit, but we can't be in this shit forever. So this is our way to get up out of this shit. This is our way to be somebody. You know what I mean? That's what we were trying to do, but they took it the wrong way. Like we promoting violence and and it led to something totally different. But our game plan was to get out the streets. You know what I'm saying? Do something positive. That was our game plan. Mm. 